35. So this is asking for geometric mean. So a geometric mean, I think, if I remember correctly, is just a normal mean. Um, but I will look it up to make sure. Six. Multiply the values and find the nth root of the product. Oh, of course, we have to be difficult, don't we? Forty six and forty eight. I will add those to the list as well. Forty six, forty eight. So metric means, so you take all the values, multiply them by each other and divide to the nth power or take the square root to an nth power. So if you have 4%, 8% and 13% growth, What you do is do 1.04 times 1.08 times 1.13 to the third power or to the third root. So you take all the values as decimals times each other to that third root. Uh, let me get my calculator. So 1.04 times 1.08 times 1.13 is 1 1.269.16. And then take that to the third root. Divide by three, which would give us one point zero eight two. Seven. So and it wants it as specifically in this question. Uh, four. Oh, it wants as a single percentage growth rate. So what you do for that is you subtract one, leaving 0 0.0827, and then move the decimal place two to get 8.3% growth or 8% growth in my case. Which if you notice is kind of close between what the actual mean would be. 25 divided by three, the 8.3%. So it's really close to the actual same percentage growth. Oh, for the, for doing this in Excel, uh, let me see, let me get Excel up. Uh, so if I have, Growth 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0.13 equals. So if I take this value times this value times this value, and then I could take it to the power of one divided by, then if I want to, I can do a count of these guys or just do a three. 
or I could do uh, is there a way to do a cube root? So when you're dealing with more than just a, the normal one to do a square root is square root, which would do a simple square root. But but since we're having to do a third of a root, we would have to do. It, we'd have to take this number and then use the caret and then open parentheses one over three to do the one third of a power to give us our answer. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So that's how we would do it to get the powers is specifically this part right here. And if we had a fourth one, And we were doing it times a five, and then we could change it to a fourth, and it would change our value. So this number right here, the one over whatever, is how many numbers are here, and every and the number that we're taking that root to are basically is all the numbers multiplied by themselves. So that's how you find the geometric mean. Uh, the next one somebody wanted to know was at 45. Range of data is different. Who's the range rule of thumb? Range rule of thumb. In real life, you never use rules of thumb generally. But I will look it up. So this one we're having, uh, Well, somebody had asked for 45, so I'm doing 45 and I'll do 46. Uh, so this one uses the range is 3.4, so let's do 2.6. I just forgot the page. Oh, that one. Okay, I knew that one. Uh, so compare the results to actual standard deviation of the data to do this one, please. So the goal is to approximate standard deviation with 10.2. So what you can do on here is you go to, here's the data, and let me do that. So we have data here. And our, Standard deviation is 0 0.67. And we're trying to figure out the range rule of thumbs to identify standard deviation.
So we need to find for the first thing we do is set to find a mean or the average. Oh. By the way, over here, apparently, I just found this out. For geometric mean, you can actually just calculate the geometric mean using geo mean of all these values. I did not know that. There you go. So on this, to find the geometric mean, it's geo mean of your list of values. On here, to to find your mean, you take average of all your data. And that will find your average. So our range, which is given to us, is 3.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me put this over here. So that would mean our minimum given that is, I'm overthinking this, aren't I? So in general, a rule of thumb is that value should be about two standard deviations from the mean uh, for, the, for the significant. So majority of our data is gonna be within two significant figures. So, or oh, sorry, two standard deviations. So if you take the standard devia deviation times two, that would be your left side. And on your right side, you do the same thing. We take two standard deviations to the right, and that would give you how far to the right you get. And then add them together. And that should be your spread. Unfortunately, that's not what we have. So instead, what we had to do is that we have 3.4 as our range. So that should be this right here. So we should have this divided by two to be how far to the right we get. And the same thing divided by two to see how far to the left we get. And since two standard deviations is how far we're moving, so our approximate standard deviation should be that 1.7 divided by two or 0.185, sorry, 0.85. And since they want to know if it's within 0.2, you subtract the two <coughs> and it's within 0.2. So what they want to know is the fact that a majority of your data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So if you take the range, should be ideally about four standard deviations for the mean. So you could either split it in half and then half again, or take the range and divide it by four. And... Forty-six. Oh wait, what's the second part of this question? Oh, it just was with its end. Then, uh, standard deviation of a sample data. I've seen this before somewhere. So on these, these are headed just a bit different. This is a very interesting deviation they wanted. Standard deviation.
So we do a standard deviation of a frequency table. So the first thing we have to do is essentially calculate the mean of this value. So I remember correct. Oh, so the first thing we have to do is sum up everything. So how many total do we have in here? So you do that by equals sum of everything in here. So we have 87. So then we have equals this divided by 87. But we have to make sure when we do this that we put in dollar signs here. And then we can copy this down through here. So it gives us the relative frequency. I think that's how I do this. Uh, the next thing we have to do is find the midpoint. So it'd be 36 minus 30 divided by 2. So 33. Uh, 40, 47, 54, 61, 68. This is a lot more complicated than it has to be. What page of the book are they even looking at? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I get the right answer. So I am taking my time. You are being annoying. Ninety seven. They don't really explain this well, do they? Yep. And rule of thumb. So. 
they never actually do it. Okay, so the textbook is useless. Uh, let me Google. Sorry. From frequency table. Midpoint. Okay, so I'm going to have to redo this. So you do calculate the midpoint. Which is equals thirty plus thirty six minus thirty divided by two, forty seven, fifty four, sixty one, sixty eight. And then you take the midpoint squared. So this to the second power. You can copy this down. So then you multiply the midpoint times the frequency. Midpoint squared times frequency. So this would be N2 times P2. Copy that down. So you do have to find the sum of all frequencies. So how many times do you have things occur, which is the sum of all of this. Then you find the sum of this right here the frequency times the midpoint squared. So M sum of M2, or sorry, Q2 to Q7. Uh, to find the mean, you take, uh, do, 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 do. Mm. The mean is the sum of your frequencies times your mean midpoint. All right, times n times f. So your mean is this big value minus a little divided by your little value. Does not make a lot of sense. That makes absolutely no sense. One second, I'm going to cheat and see the answer. I don't know how they got that number. Why did they square? Okay, so we have a formula here. F times X squared, so they did, that is what they did. So this is x squared. So this is f times x squared. Okay. Some. Okay. So 
So we had to read this a little bit differently. So the formula that we got, let me share my screen. Let me share actual screen. So this formula here shows that our number times the summation of F times X squared. So F in this case is our frequency. X squared is the square of our midpoint. So we take 33 times two, 40 times 16, all these up here, and then add them all together, which is this number right here. So we take this number, one, three, eight, seven, six. And then we took the 87. And then we subtract, so we multiply those together. And then from that, it's a really big number. We subtract the sum of our frequency times X. And then we square that number. So this squared. So we take this number minus this number, which is negative. Why is that negative? Eight. Six, eight, seven, P eight squared goes. Why is this not working? So equals N times the sum of these minus this squared is that number divided by this times this minus one. And then that gave me a positive number. And then I take the square root of all this. And I'm ending up with a number that I completely understand why you guys are having an issue with this one, because it is not acting like it's supposed to. Midpoint is 33. Oh, that's what I did. Well, that's just the next value. Some, I forgot something over here. Frequency times midpoint is what I need. Here. I missed a step. So then we have N, which is 87. N minus one is 87 minus one. And then we have uh, F of X squared, which is this F of X or F X squared. which is going to be this 
squared. So our top value, so I'm gonna take everything up top. So I take N times the summation of F of X squared, which is this right here, and then minus the F times X squared. And the bottom will be 87 times 86. So the inside, which is just the top minus over the bottom is this divided by this. And our square root or our S value is this square rooted. which please be right. And for some reason I'm wrong and I don't know how. On this one, if you can get within 0.2 to 0.3, uh, bug me and I will give you credit for this because this is just not liking me today. And if I can't do it easily, I don't expect you guys to do it easily either. Uh, any other questions? Yes, once this is done, we, this one and the last one, I will go ahead and upload both of them. Uh, on YouTube, I will post a link when I'm done with them. Um, Any other questions for today or? Other than 46, have there really been anything that, and the geometric mean, has there been anything that's been kind of difficult or no? Well, um, so I'm in the process of uploading 9.9 right now. Um, I will publish this one and that one uh, in just a second and then upload it. Uh, yeah, it, I usually do that, except I, I tend to try and look through different methods on the internet and see if there's a quicker way. The fact that the textbook, which I have the textbook, 
doesn't have a problem like that doesn't help. <coughs> so, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't much help. Uh, so what did they actually say to help me? Uh, help me solve. Yeah. Two, six, eight, it was eighty seven. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, I had that. I'm trying to see, because I have all this, I'm actually checking to see where I got it wrong. Seven times two one three eight six. Two, six. Apparently I was right and so the way I did it was right. So I just checked it on the help me solve this. So uh, if you set it up, uh, where are you guys? If you set it up like this, frequency midpoint, find the square of the mid, uh, frequency times midpoint squared, frequency times midpoint. And then here I summed up the mid frequency times midpoint, then squared it, and then just calculated part of it. It does actually give you the right answer. So let me actually save this as 916. So I'll, I'll go ahead and post this up as well on the homework one. Oh, stop one. Okay. Does anyone else have any more questions with this? Uh, well, if not, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.